Hello YouTube and newsletter subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell 3 duck and this is another Black Star News update. Bonnie sent in a good uh, question. This is in the newsletter currently on page 25. This may be moved up. But let's take a look at the video of what she's talking about here. Nibiru and Nemesis pathway up to September 16th, number 38. This appears, you know, it's kind of pretty. And um, okay, then so we go. If I could flip this over for you, then uh, and he's showing. No, I... He's showing his black star, his Nibiru, whatever you want to come say, whatever you want to call it, coming up from the southern hemisphere and going back, diving back down. This is very similar to Gilbert Erickson, I believe. Um, fellow, he seems pretty smart. Tried to converse with him. Guy didn't want to have anything to say. I think that the guy is just spreading disinformation. I'm not saying this is disinformation necessarily. He's getting this information from somewhere, but it just simply does everything does just not add up. Got to working on the doing the research on this story, and I want to share some of that information with you. So this is where Bonnie starts, and this this is where I begin right here. Just starting off, the gift type model showing Nibiru coming from the southern hemisphere to reach perihelion and dive back into the southern hemisphere is definitely inaccurate based upon the well-defined seismic pattern and related information, including the magnetopause reversal. There's a link to the video right there. The mystery Martian dust storms, and then. Um, there's a comment. I'm trying to give you more information. If you understand about how solar systems are formed, dust cloud, condensation, solar disk formation, then you're going to realize that these guys are orbiting one another or a third point in space and that they are going to generally be like this. That's just the way that it is out there in the solar system. And I give you more. The two disks they found are aligned with each other in the same plane, which that's normal. That's the way that it is. That's the way things are supposed to be. That's typical. Doesn't mean they're always going to be that way, but a very high percentage of these boys, this is the way they are. And the leading hypothesis is that we're dealing with the invisible collapse binary twin to our sun that went supernova. So this would be like our sun. This would be the binary twin. It was much larger. Larger stars burn out quicker. It imploded. It created this remnant body that is now doing this thing. And rather than orbiting a third point in space that they held in common, now the black star has superior mass to the black star, so the black star has a planetary relationship. Even though it's a star, it's a remnant star, it has a planetary relationship with the sun. But still, depending on where the sun was when it went supernova, then a new set of mechanics took over. Because the biggest gravity well was no longer the imploded sun, but it was our sun. So wherever this guy was, it began having, it began, instead of orbiting that third point in space, it began orbiting our sun, but still on the same plane. And there's, there's just too much evidence of that. So I'll give you some of the background information right here, and then I get down to this part. We know from the seismic data that Earth is passing between the sun and black star, creating big seismic events on a 188-day cycle. From December 26, 2004, there's information on the Sumatra quake, all the way up to April 25th. When you use, which is it, Chile or Fukushima? I believe it's Chile. When you take Chile on February 27th, to, that should be February the 27th there. It says the 26th. It's a typo. Whenever you go backwards to Sumatra, you get 12 point, what was it, 12.8 days. When you go forward to April 25th, you get 12.4 days that you're adding to each year. That's the remainder that's left over. And adding 12 days to your... Um, each year, divide that in half because you have a near side and back side alignment, then that's where you get the 188 day cycle. The 188 day cycle is, uh, that's, oh, here we go again. This, uh, this guy wants to close. Uh, I'll open it back up for you here in a second. Okay, what, but what I wanted to show you was over here. This area of my chart has to be updated. The data is coming in, and I'll update it. This actual event here was April the 28th. Only a three-degree move. You see this 12-degree move you have average for each year? And the um, Sumatra quake isn't on here. I begin right here in February 27, 2010. Then you have Fukushima, Guerrero, Papua, Solomon Island. These are happening on a 188-day cycle because it's showing 
leftward movement from the sun's perspective leftward movement in the orbit diagram the ra values are getting higher and higher as this thing's going through space but not only that the backside alignments christchurch september 4 2010 after that, then we had Fukushima. At 188 days, you got Fiji. After that, you have Guerrero. After that, you have Colombia. Then things start staggering a little further ahead. These backside alignments get a little bit later in the year, and these are becoming earlier in the year. There's a something happening with the chart that I have yet to wrap my head, head around, but I'm getting to understand it better. It's magnetic repulsion, binary star magnetic repulsion model. And there's more going on here in my deliberations with geophysicists, with James and Jason getting to a little better picture don't have a full chorus a full symphony singing yet and I hope there's more people science minded gifted type people that will join us in these deliberations and I'll post you you want to answer the 10 basic questions I want to see your perspective where you're coming from and then you will be part of our little get together our research group Sandy has contributions too. Sandy's quoted by Jason Jason and the geophysicist and we quote each other and we give our views back and forth and gradually we're getting a chorus that's going on so the fact let me get back to the point here and let me reopen that newsletter there's some kind of conflict thingy that's happening here and this was down on page 25 let's get this back on 100 percent get back down to page 25 there we go now, so this is the outlook you can already see from this pattern and the pattern from the video that that's that they just really not going to add up. They just really not going to add up. This is the uh, Gilbert Erickson, I believe that's his name. This is the same model he's using, and I think that's going to be this guy's source. And I've talked with that guy. Disinformation for certain. I'm not saying this guy is again, but the guy that's feeding him the information has got this wacky theory that will not create a seismic pattern. He's not. Gilbert Erickson is not going to talk about the seismic pattern. He's not going to talk about magnetopause reversals, Martian dust storms, how those things happened in 2012. It happened again in 2016. We predicted it in advance. Everything happened. Yes, it happened a little earlier than I thought because the black star slowed down left removed in the orbit diagram. I didn't see that coming. That surprised me. But the, the solar flaring activity took place in April 2016, leading up to the Martian dust storms leading up to the magnetopause collapse same pattern that we saw in 2000 and uh, in 12 and it's because of the pattern that we were able to make the prediction we don't have to understand the science as long as we can see the pattern and make the prediction right I want to understand the science more and it appears that the uh, magnetopause collapse reversals Martian dust storms are caused by mag magneto mag caused by magnetic portal connection convergence in other words the sun and the earth are connected by a magnetic portal and this object going around that's coming in is connected to the sun too and as we pass between them we have multiple magnetic portal connections that are converging on each other and interacting together they're like giant live electrical wires and then it's that those electrical wires getting closer and closer together and cross firing creating these highly charged ionic clouds given directionality between the converging portals and I saw a comment on my video yesterday that NASA would laugh at this if you go to my if you go to my channel right here and you go to magneto magnet magnetic portal connections it's going to take you to NASA documentation they're going to show you how the Sun and Earth are connected they're going to talk to you about internal active active conduits passive conduits they're going to give you a little bit of the anatomy of a magnetic portal connection from current understanding because right now they're looking at these portal connections as magnetic because they can they can measure magnetics they can see magnetics when actually we're going to find out in the future that these internal conduits are conducting electromagnetism from across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So the sun is going to sleep because the black star is doing it. And it's creating, as it gets getting closer, the magnetic portal connection is getting more, it's conducting more solar electromagnetism for redirecting to all the planets based on their near proximity. So that is the facts in this case from my perspective. And, um, so I wanted to make this special news update. I'd like to keep them around 10 minutes and not go much further. Lots of information in here. The uh, seismic pattern, the 180-day cycle. This is a link to um, Minster Armour Bosich paper. I became aware of instantly in April 
of 2011, and it was connected to the Ellen, the Ellen and Comet discovery. A lot of people want to laugh about it, but we learned a lot. The discovery of the seismic pattern came because Leonid Elenin, which I don't even think is a real person, this is a NASA PSYOP. They pointed to the Leo constellation at the discovery 12-10-2000. Oh, this should be 12-10-2010 right there. I'll fix that. And um, and then whenever Mitchell Armour Bosich came out with his paper, Marshall Masters grabbed him by the arm. I was doing, I was uh, on, my first radio show ever was done with Marshall Masters uh, as a member of his elite um research team that was on May 3rd 2011 right after this right here happened and it was because of Mr. Armour Bosich and what Marshall Masters was twisting his arm and changing his testimony I communicated with Mr. Armour Bosich a dozen times before he ever got in contact with um, Marshall Masters and I heard his views on all these things he wasn't concerned about seismic pattern or any of that stuff he was concerned about someone stealing his patent rights that's all he was concerned about He's not a planet X, black star, Nibiru, anything. He is a, he's using the plus six seismicity paper to uh, for, for a different reason. This has to do with hyper-resonation, frequencies, solar system, mechanics, and lends more towards plasma cosmology, if you ask me. But anyway, the uh, that's the reason the Marshall Masters don't like me anymore, because I was blowing the whistle on what he was doing in the arm twisting with Minster Armour Bosich. But this is a very key part of the puzzle of solving this case. Of what happened back in 2011 and Ellen and Comet I made a lot of mistakes back then that was my first year in the investigation but still there was enough information available to make the prediction for March 15 2000 this investigation started January of 2011 right after the Ellen and Comet was discovered we had enough data even in the first two months to make the prediction for March the 15th for Fukushima that happened four days earlier the next year we predicted Garrett Guerrero within two days so we identified the 188-day cycle, but there would be no cycle. There would be no seismic pattern if the star coming in here was doing so like this. This is my view to, to be totally re rejected. If somebody has the scientific wherewithal to demonstrate using these type of diagrams, they have the wherewithal also to identify the seismic pattern, the magnetopause reversals, the Martian dust storms, the other events that are connected definitely connected the shrinking heliosphere the weakening magnetosphere there's a long list of scientific evidence that is put together in this project black star investigation and the fact that these guys go off in their little niches their little cubby holes and they they work independent of the science they're trying to give you a scientific explanation without including the geology the astrophysics the physics you see what I mean right that's what project black star does that these other guys are not going to do whether it's suspicious observers Dutch sense the Mary Greeley's you know the people like that got you know, God bless them bless their hearts they are giving us information from their little teeny corner of the solar system little corner perspective of the study if you want to watch suspicious observers you're going to get a nice weather report right and he's going to focus everything on the Sun as if the Sun's doing everything whenever the black star is that 90 billion pound elephant in the room so anyway this went a little bit over let me point you back to the newsletter article so you can see what you're looking at here and this why I'm here before I sign off all the information is there that you need to be able to sort this out there is a ton of information in this newsletter there's a uh, this is a really beautiful piece by Jason infinity and beyond in this uh, little deal that he's put together here and J Jason got a good mind and he thinks way outside the box like I do and he's showing me some things remember I'm very slow to draw conclusions I'm gonna to listen to everybody's singing in this case and I'm listening for that ring of that bell that sound of truth and uh, so but there is diagrams in here there is uh, just really really a lot a lot a lot a lot there's more information in here on black star features and characteristics than maybe in all the other newsletters combined this is a really good newsletter it's deep you go to the deep side of the pool a little bit but gradually and I'm trying to inspire the contributors to to speak more gen in more general terms and rather than these highly sophisticated terms and to connect their commentary to events things that we can measure observations the reversing magnetosphere what can cause that 
the, uh, the, the uh, global warming that's going on. And there's debate about there if it's cooling or warming. It's definitely warming. 2017 will be the hottest year in recorded history. Take that to the bank. Although there are going to be colder regions, the polar vortex phenomenon taking place. But tons and tons of information here. Make sure that you, if you're not a subscriber, I hope that you will be. This will be included in the Dropbox folder for all newsletter subscribers, along with everything else. And uh, if you're not, then make sure that you're going to get this this uh, a free link to this video out of the description box of the upcoming update that's coming out tomorrow. Um, this is the one that I did earlier, the news, the uh, report, and you guys should have already seen that video. If you haven't, jump over there. There's the link to it. You can get it out of my description box. Please share my videos. Let's up the numbers over here to get a little more credibility. We don't even have 10,000. Some of these guys have got 200,000. We don't even have 10,000 subscribers over here. So if you guys will do that, then I appreciate it very much. And this went longer than I wanted to, but I want to give you a little demonstration. And remember, it's only $25 per year. You go to terlo3.com, hit the subscription button, and why I got your ear here, there, I had to change email addresses. It's kind of a long story if you haven't been around when we went through it, beginning of 2015. And apparently the old email address was connected to this button. All the settings were changed, but this button has just been updated now. So some people, whenever you receive your notification email, you always get the right email address, but some people got the wrong email address because of the old subscription button. So just want to make you aware of that. I did identify the problem. It is fixed. And I apologize for that. And thanks again. Remember, you can donate here. You can contact me. This is a non-subscription, non-subscriber email address. You can see how busy I am. I cannot get here every day. But I get here as quick as I can, as time permits, among the other things. And I will. Get, you will get an answer when you contact me here. Eventually, you're going to get one. It may be a few days. It may be a week or more. That's just the way that it works. Remember that my time is invested every single morning answering every single new email from every single subscriber and contributor every single day. And sometimes that goes till four in the afternoon and I just do at that point I'm about ready to drop and I cannot do anymore. I have to get away from it or I'm going my head's gonna explode. So um remember only twenty five dollars a year. This is a really, really great deal. You have access to all the information and you get access to all the other previous emails. And for those of that are kind of new, I recommend two thousand and twelve volume number nine. My senior um, Michael Owens, my senior astronomer at that time, was writing all the feature email, uh, all the feature articles for the newsletter. Very brilliant man, and he begins off in 2012. There's some really great stuff back there. So I just want to point you in that direction. Thanks again, and um, be sure to share this video with others. And appreciate you guys' support. And I'll see you on the next Black Star Update report, which is coming out tomorrow, unless I see something else where another Black Star news needs to be made. Thanks again. I'll see you guys on the next update report. to be that way but I'm very high percentage of these boys this is the way they are and the leading hypothesis is that we're dealing with the invisible collapse binary twin to our Sun that went supernova so this would be like our Sun this would be the binary twin it was much larger larger stars burn out quicker it imploded it created this remnant body that is now doing this thing and rather than orbiting a third point in space that they held in common now the black star has superior mass to the black star, so the black star has a planetary relationship. Even though it's a star, it's a remnant star, it has a planetary relationship with the sun. But still, depending on where the sun was when it went supernova, then a new set of mechanics took over. Because the biggest gravity well was no longer the imploded sun, but it was our sun. So wherever this guy was, it began having, it began, instead of orbiting that third point in space, it began orbiting our sun but still on the same plane and there's there's just too much evidence of that so I'll give you some of the background information right here and then I get down to this part we know from the seismic data that earth is passing between the Sun and black star creating big seismic events on a 188 day cycle from December 26 2004 there's information on the Sumatra quake all the way up to April 25th when you use which is it Chile or Fukushima I believe it's Chile when you take Chile on February 27th that should be February the 27th. Hello YouTube and newsletter subscribers. This is Terrell from terrellow 3 duck and this is another Black Star News update. Bonnie sent in a good uh,
question. This is in the newsletter currently on page 25. This may be moved up. But let's take a look at the video of what she's talking about here. Nibiru and Nemesis pathway up to September 16th, number 38. This appears, you know, it's kind of pretty. And um, okay, then so we go. If I could flip this over then. for you, then uh, and he's showing. March 2011. No, I... He's showing his black star, his Nibiru, whatever you want to come say. Find seismic pattern and related information, including the magneto pause reversal. There's a link to the video right there. The mystery Martian dust storms. And then um, there's a comment. I'm trying to give you more information. If you understand about how solar systems are formed, dust cloud, condensation, solar disk formation, then you're going to realize that these guys are orbiting one another or a third point in space and that they are going to generally be like this. That's just the way that it is out there in the solar system. And I give you more, the two disks they found are aligned with each other in the same plane, which that's normal. That's the way that it is. That's the way things are supposed to be. That's typical. Doesn't mean they're always going to, whatever you want to call it, coming up from the southern hemisphere and going back, diving back down. This is very similar to Gilbert Erickson, I believe. Um, fellow, he seems pretty smart. Tried to converse with him. The guy didn't want to have anything to say. I think that the guy's just spreading disinformation. I'm not saying this is disinformation necessarily. He's getting this information from somewhere, but it just simply does. Everything does just not add up. Got to working on the, doing the research on this story, and I want to share some of that information with you. So this is where Bonnie starts, and this this is where I begin right here, just starting off. The gift type model showing Nibiru coming from the Southern Hemisphere to reach perihelion and dive back into the Southern Hemisphere is definitely inaccurate based upon the well-defined two disks they found are aligned with each other in the same plane, which that's normal. That's the way that it is. That's the way things are supposed to be. That's typical. Doesn't mean they're always going to be that way, but I'm very high percentage of these boys. This is the way they are. And the leading hypothesis is that we're dealing with the invisible collapse binary twin to our sun that went supernova. So this would be like our sun. This would be the binary twin. It was much larger. Larger stars burn out quicker. It imploded. And, um, okay, then so we go. If I could flip this over then. for you, then uh, and he's showing. March 2011. He's showing his black star, his Nibiru, whatever you want to come, say, whatever you want to call it, coming up from the southern hemisphere and going back, diving back down. This is very similar to Gilbert Erickson, I believe. Um, fellow, he seems pretty smart. Tried to converse with him. The guy didn't want to have anything to say. I think that the guy is just spreading disinformation. I'm not saying this is disinformation necessarily. He's getting this information from somewhere, but it just simply does everything does just not add up got to working on the doing the research on this story and I want to share some of that information with you so this is where Bonnie starts and this this is where I begin right here just starting off the gift type model showing Nibiru coming from the southern hemisphere to reach perihelion and dive back into the southern hemisphere is definitely inaccurate based upon the well-defined seismic pattern and related information including the magneto pause reversal Hello YouTube and newsletter subscribers, this is Terrell from terrellor3.com and this is another Black Star News update. Bonnie sent in a good uh, question, this is in the newsletter currently on page 25, this may be moved up. But let's take a look at the video of what she's talking about here. Nibiru and Nemesis pathway up to September 16th, number 38. This appears, you know, it's kind of pretty. And there's a link to the video right there. The Mystery Martian Dust Storms. And then um, there's a comment. I'm trying to give you more information. If you understand about how solar systems are formed, dust cloud, condensation, solar disk formation, then you're going to realize that these guys are orbiting one another or a third point in space and that they are going to generally be like this. That's just the way that it is out there in the solar system. And I give you more, 